Welcome to the Solax Instructional Installation Video Series. In this video, we will guide you through the installation and commissioning of Solax's X1 Hybrid LV. We will provide detailed step-by-step -step instructions to ensure the successful installation and commissioning of Solax's X1 Hybrid LV. Before installation, we kindly request that you take a moment to read the X1 Hybrid LV installation guide and familiarize yourself with all the warnings and caution notes. This will ensure a smooth and safe installation process. First, let's get started with the introduction of the X1 Hybrid LV. There are different wiring methods in different countries, please refer to the diagram below. For most countries, neutral line and PE line are separated from each other. For Australia neutral line and PE line are combined together. Installation personnel must wear safety gear in order to avoid electrical shock and personal injury. Please prepare the listed tools in advance. Let's briefly go over what comes in the packaging of the Solax X1 Hybrid LV. Now, let's have a look at the physical appearance and dimensions of the inverter. Familiarize yourself with the location and function of each port before connecting it. Do not connect the cable to the wrong port. To ensure a proper installation, please follow the guidelines. Firstly, please avoid direct sunlight, rain exposure, and snow accumulation. And select a location away from flammable materials and antennas. It is recommended to install an awning or cover over the device to protect it from damage. Secondly, the ambient temperature should be between minus 25 degrees Celsius and plus 60 degrees Celsius, and the humidity should be within 0% to 100%. Also, the device has IP65 ingress protection. Remember to avoid installing the device at altitudes exceeding 3,000 meters. Please reserve at least 30 centimeters of space when installing the inverter for heat dissipation. It is recommended to install the inverter more than 100 centimeters above the ground. Now we'll move on to the wall mounting process. Start by fixing the wall bracket to the wall and remember to drill the holes at a minimum depth of 80 millimeters. Next, lift up the inverter with two persons and hang it on the wall bracket. Tighten the fixing screws on both sides of the inverter to the bracket. Following are some required tools, please prepare them. Use a wire stripper to strip approximate 7 mm of the cable. Insert the stripped cable into the PV pin contact. Press and tighten the PV pin contact with the cable core, make sure it is firmly connected. Insert the cable into the PV connector until a click is heard. The negative PV cable is made in a similar way to the positive PV cable, pay attention to the different terminals of them. After the PV cables are completed, use a multimeter to measure the voltage between positive and negative PV connectors. Make sure the open circuit voltage does not exceed the input limit of 500 volts. Finally, insert the PV cables into the corresponding positive and negative ports of the inverter. Use a wire stripper to remove the 10 mm insulation layer at the end of the wire. Insert the cable into the fork terminal. Finally, use crimping pliers to press tightly. In the same way, make all the grid and EPS cables. Use a cross screwdriver to loosen the screws on both sides of the inverter. Remove the lower cover of the inverter. Then remove the waterproof plug of grid port. Pass the previously prepared grid cables through the corresponding screw caps and seal rings. Insert the crimped cables into the corresponding L, N, and PE terminals according to the wire sequence and tighten the screws with a cross screwdriver. 
twist to tighten the screw caps and seal rings. The connection of EPS port is similar to the grid port. For battery capacity, we have different recommendations for different models, please refer to the table for the suitable battery capacity for each inverter model. Now let's connect the battery, firstly strip 10mm of the insulation layer at one end of the positive power cable. Thread the heat shrink tube through the stripped cables and insert the cables into the OT terminals and crimp the terminal tightly. Use a heat gun to tighten the heat shrink tube. The negative battery cable is made in a similar way to the positive battery cable. Loosen the waterproof connector. Remove the sealing cover from the plug. Insert the positive cable into the bat positive port and the negative cable into the bat negative port. Remove the screw. Fix the power cables to the corresponding battery connectors, then use a cross screwdriver to tighten the screw. Twist to tighten the seal rings. This is the pin definition of the meter slash CT port on the inverter. RS485 cables from the CT should go to pin 1 and 8, pin 3 and 6 are the reserved CT pins. If you need this feature, please contact us for assistance. Remove the plug. Pass the CT communication cable through the plug. Connect the RJ45 connector to the meter CT port of the inverter, then tighten the waterproof screw. Connect the other end of the cable to the RJ45 coupler. Please clamp the CT to the live wire on the grid incoming side, and the arrow on the CT must point to the grid. The CT can also be replaced by a meter, now we will introduce the connection of the meter. Meter RS485 cables go to pin 4 and 5 of the meter slash CT port on the inverter. Pay attention to the port definition marked on the meter. After connecting the grid and inverter cables, insert the communication cable of the meter into the 24 and 25 communication ports. Pass the RJ45 connector from the meter through COM1. Insert the battery BMS cables into the corresponding ports. After the BMS communication between the battery and the inverter is finished, the battery will work normally. For ground cable connection, firstly, strip 10 to 12 mm of the grounding cable insulation. Put on heat shrink tubing, insert the stripped cable into the OT terminal. Crimp the OT terminal with a crimping tool. Then use a heat gun to shrink the tube so that it can be firmly contacted by the terminal. Finally, find the ground port on the body of the inverter and screw the ground wire on the inverter with a cross pan screw. Put the cover back to the inverter after the wiring is completed, then fasten the two screws on both sides.
The inverter provides a dongle port, which can transmit data from the inverter to the monitoring platform. Plug the Wi-Fi dongle into the dongle port. Remember to keep the QR code upwards. Before commissioning, please check the cable connections and inverter status in advance. After that, turn on DC switch of the inverter. Turn the dip switch on all the batteries to the lower position, then turn on the battery switch. For more battery installation details, please refer to the LR36 installation video. Finally, turn on other switches of grid. The main interface is the default interface, the inverter will automatically return to this interface when the system started up successfully or not operated for a period of time. Next, we will demonstrate how to set the relevant settings on the inverter, including time and date, language, meter slash CT, working mode, safety regulation, and export control. Step 1. Tap the circle in the middle of the main interface screen to enter the main menu. Step 2. Tap setting. Step 3. Tap basic setting. Step 4. Set the language, date time and meter slash CT install state. Then tap square root to save. Step 5. Tap work mode to select which mode you want. Then tap square root to save. Step 6. Tap setting. Step 7. Tap advanced setting to set the safety code and export control. Then tap square root to save. For more battery installation details, please refer to the LR36 installation video. Also, you can set the inverter on the Solax app. Please scan the QR code to download the app. Firstly input the username and password to log in the app, if you do not have an account yet, click create a new account in the bottom. Secondly touch the plus icon in the middle of the page, fill in the site information to create a site, such as site name, size, location etc, and scan the QR code of the pocket Wi-Fi to add the inverter. Next, configure Wi-Fi connection for the Wi-Fi module. For more information about the operation of Wi-Fi configuration, please refer to the Wi-Fi dongle video. Touch the device icon and then touch the settings button to enter the settings page. Settings includes user settings and advanced settings. Once you access the system on or OFF interface, you can remotely configure the system to turn on or OFF as desired. After entering into the work mode interface, you can set self-use, feed in priority, backup mode, manual, peak shaving, schedule as follows. The default password should be set by SolaX authorized installers. After entering into the user settings interface, you can set the data and time firstly. The inverter provides multiple languages for users to choose. Here you can set safety code according to different grid tied standards. Please refer to the table for some main codes. Set the system maximum allowed feed-in power to the grid. Especially, when there is a zero injection requirement, just set the value to be zero. By default, the inverter is set to CT, change to meter if the inverter is connected to a meter. 